In this video I'm going to be discussing the polar coordinate system and the polar coordinate system is probably one of the more commonly used systems um, in reality, especially when you start getting into real technical stuff like uh, astrophysics. So anyway, let's, uh, let's start off the way we usually do. Zoom in. Okay. And I'm just going to write here polar coordinates. Polar chords. Okay. Polar coordinates are used in dishes. That's probably one of the more common places that I can imagine. Um, it would be used. Let's use a casing point. If you have your dish, which is shooting some stuff, which is shooting this little sensor dilly at an object in space, which looks like a maybe a Maybe it's an asteroid or something. I, I don't know. There's an alien ship. What we can do is we can draw what I would like to call just a, basically a hemisphere around that, the object that it, the center is based around. So let me, let me just draw that for you. I'm going to draw it in, oh, I'm going to draw it in cyan. What we can do is we can actually draw a hemisphere around it. And what we can see here is that there's a coordinate system. X, Y, and then you have your Z. Now remember that is the Cartesian, but I'm using this X and Y to give us kind of a basis of a, a comparison almost. So what I want us to do is I want us to develop the trend of, of where is the given object R, which is going to be out in this direction. Okay, now the given object R is going to be cap of R. And what you need to do is you have to break that down by projecting it down to wherever it hits the ground plane. And then what you do is you have your R, which is what you had in your cylindrical, it's so the lowercase r, and that is where you'll be using, this is where you're going to have theta and R is going to be your length and then V right here is going to be pretty simple. Okay, so I know it seems complicated, but when do you want to use this? This is basically anytime you have a cone shape, a cylinder, a fixed object looking at something moving away. This is usually the coordinate system that you're going to want to use. Uh, a lot of things having to do with space will utilize this. A lot of things having to do with um, earthquakes will utilize this coordinate system. Basically anything that is a single fixed point reference you will use. Um, let me just draw us a, a different example, okay? Let's say, and I'm going to just come up with something elaborate, okay? Let's say you are standing you're coming down a ladder which is up on this bridge, okay? So you are coming down this ladder. In accordance to here, in accordance to here, it may look like you're you are moving in a straight line. However, if I were to be off the bridge, 
prefer to be down the street and off the bridge, so below the bridge. Let's say if there was another road crossing through here, and I was standing down here, this is me, I'm the tall guy, and I'm just closer to you, and I'm taking a look over at you, dropping, realize that there is, I'm fixed at a certain point, and I'm going to have some angle that my head's turned at. So, like, if you think of, if you think of my, my head like this, here's my head, my nose. So if I'm looking in this direction, then there's going to be some, obviously this is theta equaling zero. but there's going to be some sort of phi which is going to be up looking at the bridge. And here's the bridge platform. So you can see that that phi is basically what what's the pitch of your head looking up. I mean, if this were if this were chin right here, if this guy had like a goatee and he had eyes the angle that he is looking up, the pitch of your head, is what phi is. Theta, on the other hand, is going to be, now if this is my head again, but I have, and here's my hair, full head of hair. If I'm looking this direction, whatever my reference x is, and my reference y is, this is what my theta is going to be. So it's just wherever, the, and this would be on the ground. So I mean, just realize that this this is ground. And it should be ground for for our example at least. Now, one thing I'm just trying to emphasize here is that you have this sphere and it's basically what can your head do you turn your head left and right that's playing with the theta you turn your head up and down that's playing with the phi and then how far you are looking until you see the object how far the object is away from you is your capital R and that's the magnitude of your R and that's the R direction so anyway I, I hope you guys get a kind of an understanding of when you would use it. Um, let me just give you one quick example. This is a really popular one. Um, imagine you have, uh, you've probably seen one of these in the mall, but you have a funnel and then your quarter disappears into someone's pocket down here. So just imagine if you were to drop, you know, drop your quarter right here. Let's say there's like a this is where you drop your quarter and you watch it go around and around and around what you can see is that your fee is going to be constant because your fee is going to be right here and your theta is going to be how the coin your theta is going to be how the coin is swirling and you can kind of tell just from like theta, 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 you know, just some theta here to, to here to here. And you, you'll be able to follow it around. I'm sure there will be like a time point. But the casing idea is that this is an ideal situation that you would use polar coordinates. Um, anything having to do with satellites going around the Earth or anything like that, just as easily, um, just phi is going to be varying. So... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it just gives you a little idea of when to decide to use your polar coordinates, and hopefully, it's it'll become easy. We should run through some uh, examples. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a quick video on the different equations that are required, and also maybe I can upload a file or two regarding that. Hope you guys have a good one.